So I'm going to be doing some weathering on the uh, Vindicator here with some watercolor pencils. So I'm going to use a combination of the AK watercolor pencils and also some uh, Faber-Castell uh, watercolor pencils as well. Um, I've been using these for a long, long time. Um, these AK pencils I just got a couple of weeks ago, but I haven't tried them yet. Um, I'm definitely interested because they have a bigger range of colors than my, uh, my Faber-Castell uh, set. Um, so I'm just going to do kind of the way I do the weathering. Um, I'm just going to be mainly focusing on the Vindicator on uh, the yellow parts. I'm going to do some fading of the cloth areas on both of the wings and then I might do what I can to fade down the cloth area of uh, the vertical stabilizer on the back and then I might attack parts of the green um, banding as well. We'll see what happens with that. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to go over my process uh, for how I handle doing that. Um, there's usually two techniques that most people use with these. They either use them, these pencils dry or they use them wet. Most of this that I'm going to do today is going to be wet. I'm going to use them wet. So I'm going to have uh, a couple cups of water and then a few brushes. I tend to, I actually don't really use the pencil to the subject. I tend to put a pencil down and I get a uh, paintbrush wet and then I kind of work off the pencil and then I use my brush. Um, so I'll show you that technique here in a moment. Okay, so tool-wise, I've got my pencil sets here. Um, paint brushes, I got a couple different paint brushes that I like to use. These are, I use these specifically for my watercolor work because I know that the only thing that's gonna be on there is water and the watercolor pencils. Um, so this is a 20 slash zero round brush. Then I have a 20 slash zero shader brush. And then I have a number two round, just kind of a general purpose brush with uh, some nice uh, kind of worn in uh, hairs and then I got a big old uh, flat brush here that I use for blending. This is a 5 8 uh, flat and then a couple cups for some water um, and then yeah like I said my pencils and then of course it's always helpful to have a subject to work upon um, while you're doing it. Okay so I picked out a few colors for uh, the white here and this is the Kind of a light gray it's in german so i'm not gonna oh here we go it's warm gray two from um, faber castell and then also for the white a dirty white from ak which is their w5 pencil uh, to work on the green i have ak's w7 light green uh, for the faber castell i have light green and another color from faber castell is leaf green so those will be for the bands and then for the yellow work i have ak's w32 yellow then i have faber casters uh, dark naples ochre and then just good old-fashioned cadmium yellow uh, also from faber castle so yeah those are the colors i picked that i will uh, use for this process on the vindicator so i'm going to start with kind of uh, the yellow portions on the wing so the areas that are going to get attacked on this let me zoom in here a little bit so i'm going to work on fading with the yellow pencils along these ribbed areas in between the ribs because this was all fabric on the uh, vindicator so both both sides i'll work that in and try to fade those down a little bit and then also with the grays and the whites, I'm going to fade in this ribbed area of the uh, vertical stabilizer and the ribbed areas of the horizontal stabilizers in the back. And then, obviously, the green. I already kind of faded this in when I airbrushed it in. These uh, stripes on the top of the wings need to be faded in a little bit on just the cloth areas. So this is already kind of faded here because this is cloth as well. So this is that doped aluminum look. Um, but I'll have to try to work on just getting these small areas here on the rib part of the wings where the fabric is with uh, some light greens as well. So let me get set up and I'll get all my uh, brushes and my paint brushes and I need to go get some water and we'll go start uh, getting after this thing with some watercolor pencils. Okay, so I got me some, this is just normal tap water. It's lukewarm, it's not cold, it's not warm, it's not hot, it's just lukewarm. 
I got two pots. One is just for me to dip my brush in while I draw from the actual uh, pencil. The other one is to clean off later if I do any blending or like that. Uh, so for right now, I'm just using, I'm going to start with uh, cadmium yellow. So I'm just going to kind of take a dip in here. And I'm just going to work my way off the tip of the pencil. So I need a little more water here. So as you start to work the tip of the pencil, the pigment will start to get wet and it will start to get on your brush. So I don't know if you can see that, but it's on the tip of the brush. Very hard to see. I didn't sharpen the pencils or anything. They're just right out of the uh, the tin. So this is a cadmium yellow from Faber-Castor. And I'm just going to work on the inside sections of the ribbed area. Okay, and I'm working on a semi-gloss surface. So it's a little, it's getting a little beady, so I might have to take a little bit off. And I'm just kind of dapping around the inside area of this ribbed area. And the effect I'm going for is very subtle. It's not going to be right in your face. I just want some slight fading on this because these birds were, were taken pretty good care of since they were pre-war era. Once I get how I like, move the pigment around a little bit more. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry for a little bit. I'm just gonna move on to the next part. And as you go, you'll kind of get a feel for how much water you need, how many dips in the pencil you're gonna need. It's just kind of gotta get used to it. I'm interested to see since I've been using these Faber-Castor pencils for so long because I'm kind of used to them. I'm going to see if they, when I start using the AK stuff, that they, the AK pencils are very similar or not. Do one more and then I'll cut it and I'll meet you at the other end. Let me show you where my progress is at. So let me go. A little bit more pigment off of this pencil. Just a little bit of that off. You start to learn. Sometimes when you put it on the model, it, it beads up. So then you take a little, a little bit of the water away. So that's why I have the uh, paper towel underneath me, so I can kind of play with it. seeing the entire back of my head the entire time while I'm working on this. I'm not used to doing work and having a video camera behind me at the same time. So my apologies if my big thick skull gets stuck in frame from time to time. I figure this is probably the best view for y'all to see. Okay, so I don't know if you really see that. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. to see it. These are the first three uh, ribs I worked on on this aileron and you can definitely tell there's a different kind of tone change in the middle compared to the rest of this right here. So that's the kind of effect. This is gonna be a definitely a layered effect. So right now this is the cadmium yellow. I'm gonna probably stack some other yellows around these as well as I work. So I'll continue to work along this wing and I'll uh, catch up with you uh, in a little bit. Okay. Okay, so you can see here I finished kind of the base work of this cadmium yellow. Now it looks really, really stark in comparison. If you kind of look at it here, I have so many lights. 
it's very stark. So I started out with the 20 slash zero round brush, just dipping it on the, uh, the tip of the pencil. And then just kind of mapping my way along into the panels. Now, since it's so stark, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the shader, the 20 slash zero shader, and I'm basically just gonna kind of dip it in water, take most of it off, and I'm just gonna kind of dab at the yellow to kind of cloud it and take the edge off a little bit. And I'm just gonna blend these in. I'm just, I could still move the color around a little bit. You just don't wanna to use too much water, otherwise you're gonna be taking a lot of that work off. The good thing about the pencils is they dry relatively quickly, so you can kind of work your way down the line and once you hit the end, you're able to start working on them. So you see here, I'm just kind of dabbing at them. There's some parts where the pigment is definitely a little bit too heavy. So I'm just kind of swiping the pigment around and moving it inside the panel that I want it to be on. Um, in this kind of regard, it's kind of like working with oils. If you do any kind of oil rendering, um, you can get them to where it's damp enough where you can move them around and you know they don't last as long as oils do workability wise, but as long as you have some water, you'll be able to kind of move them around, get them to where you want, or you know if you need to completely remove it, just really wet your brush and you'll be able to move the stuff around. So like on the leading edge here, are some of these flaps, it's a little bit too much of the pencil pigment in there and I have to kind of remove that. So I'm kind of using this shader as an eraser right now. I'm just dabbing it along. I definitely don't want that in some parts a little bit too heavy so the uh, pigment mixed in a little bit with where I had panel liner but since it's water-based I can just kind of swipe out the inside of the panel and make sure that it's not too stark in there and then if I find that I removed too much I can just go back and start the process over again with the 20 slash zero round brush and just get things back to the opacity I wanted at. So I will continue to blend with the shader brush and then when I finish I'll come back and show you the end results. Okay so I finished doing the blending with the 20-0 shader brush along this area and it just kind of stamped everything down so it's not as stark looking. So after I do that process, I uh, brought another player into the game, which I didn't introduce earlier. So this is a, uh, a ra uh, eight, number eight filbert brush. Oops, sorry, there we go. Eight filbert brush. And this will do another blending layer. So for this, let me zoom out here again. It's kind of like a, a dry brush here. So I'm just gonna get the, the filbert nice and wet and I'm gonna take most of it off. And then I'm just gonna kind of work my way in and blend it some more. This is just to get kind of the, the high edges off of the paint color uh, for the, uh, the yellow. Wanna avoid that green stripe. And just kind of work my way through and just blend along. Actually, I have a little bit too much water on there, so I'm gonna take a little bit off. And just keep working my way through. Like I said, we want to layer this effect as we go. This will have some yellow that's kind of poking into this leading edge of the flap. So it's kind of interfering with the, the color of the paneling wash that I did earlier. I just want to make 
sure that's out of there. So here, let me zoom in a little bit more. So you can sign and see here the difference in the tones between this flap and this part. So this part still needs to get worked on. But right now I'm just kind of laying out the base work for this part of the flap. So it looks nice and dirty and grimy, but not overly done. So yeah, I'm gonna do that entire process on the rest of this wing. And then when I finish doing that, I'll come back and I'll show you the next step. Okay, so I finished doing the layer work with the uh, cadmium yellow uh, just along the rib areas on this wing. Um, to the naked eye, I can definitely see a tonal difference. Um, it might not be coming out of the camera as much. It's kind of hard to tell. Let me see if I can get this this way. But yeah, uh, I can definitely see it here my camera I can't tell off of the monitor over here if it's actually picking it up or not um, but basically so you follow that process that I did um, with this color so what I want to do now is I actually want to map in some of this darker color as well so I'm going to use this dark Naples ochre next and that's going to be primarily focused along grab something to point with here along kind of the dark uh, where this leading edge of the flap will be to give it some darkness in the front here and then a little bit around uh, this is the metal door right here and around this hinge right here for the wing root and then up around this front uh, this seam line that's going through here so then after i do that um, i did learn i did play with the ak yellow the ak yellow is the exact same color yellow as um, the fiber caster uh, cadmium yellow so it's cadmium yellow <laughs> Um, so I will focus on Dunkel or dark Naples ochre along those areas I pointed out and just very small mapping with uh, the uh, the 20 zero uh, round. So I'll pop back to you in a minute. Okay, so I finished up the other wing. Um, like I said, it's a very subtle effect. I did the same process as I did on the other wing. I used the cadmium yellow, and then I used the uh, dark ochre uh, in the dark spots uh, near the leading edge of the flaps, and then along this front panel line, and then I blended in the same process that I showed you guys earlier. Um, I also did the, uh, the uh, vertical stabilizer and the horizontal stabilizers. Like I said, very subtle. Uh, it just added a little bit of shadowing kind of around the ribs. That's pretty, about, pretty much it. And then I also used a little bit of, let's see, light green on the willow green stripes on uh, the wings, uh, just to blend that in, um, just along the rib parts. But yeah, it's a very subtle effect. Yeah, let me grab a glove here so I don't have to put the fingerprints all over my silver finish here. Hopefully you guys can kind of see the fading on the wings. I might need to take some high def shots to uh, get it to show up a little bit. My lights in here kind of tend to blow things out. Um, but to the naked eye, it looks nice and faded. The ribs look a little bit darker. Um, I like the effect. I think it looks good.
But yeah, just to kind of recap the uh, the steps, um, I use this is the wet process, so I just use water on the tip of the uh, I get on, on my brush. I dip it in and moisten the tip of the watercolor pencil and then I kind of apply it in kind of a random pattern in the areas that I want to fade. After I do all the areas, I then take a uh, shader brush, which is kind of a flat, um, small, has a little bit of an angle on it brush down there. Dip that in some water, run most of it off, and then I blend it around. After I blend it around, then I move on to this uh, this round filbert brush, which I then dip in the water and then I kind of like dry brush it and blend it in. And then after everything's all blended in, um, I take this uh, flat 5 8 uh, brush and same process, dip it in, take almost all of it off and just kind of blend it in uh, along the ribs and just make sure there's nothing very stark. I did notice that when I do this, I might probably have to do some point washes along some panel lines here because the uh, watercolor pencil got in there. So there's some, you'll see like a grayish color panel line and also there's a piece of yellow in there. So I might need to tinker around with that. Either have to reapply some washes or I have to get in there with um, some cotton buds or a very fine pointed brush and some water and try to dig that out of there. But yeah, that wraps up how to use watercolor pencils, the wet style. Um, if you wanted to use them dry, all you'd have to really do is you get your pencil and you need a flatter finish on your model. So like I said, this is uh, a semi-gloss. You might need a, a semi-matte or a full-on matte coat. And then you'd kind of have to like lightly shade in uh, the areas you want and then blend it in with like a, a cotton bud of some sort. Um, or you can also use these, um, I use them a lot of times in cockpits and I'll basically use this as my dry brush instead of using you know an actual dry brush and some paint I just use this and hit the edges and I blend them in that way so it looks like scuff marks um, so I use lighter versions of like if I'm doing an interior green I'll use a lighter color of green or an olive to give some tonal variation on the inside but yeah so one of these days if I do anything uh, maybe my next build if I'm doing some cockpit work I'll try to do some filming to show you guys how to use them dry but yeah, that's uh, all I got for this uh, little episode here. Uh, let me know if you have any comments or questions. Hit me up on Instagram or in the comments here on the YouTubes. And uh, yeah, looking forward to uh, showing you some more stuff. Take it easy, gang. So one last thing that I forgot to mention after uh, I do the work with the oil or the uh, watercolor pencils, I make sure that I seal it in with a coat of clear. So I haven't done that yet, but my plan will be to use some of this awesome stuff. This is MRP's Super Clear Semi-Gloss. So I will let this kind of settle down overnight. Um, I'll check it again in the uh, next tomorrow, and then I'll give it a coat if I'm happy with, with the results. Um, I should be able to do some tweaking on the watercolor pencils after 24 hours as long as you have some water you might need to use a little bit more water um, but yeah make sure you seal in all your pencil work within a clear coat otherwise when you shoot or use oils or if you use something else over the top of it it could blow away some of your watercolor pencils because it's just watercolor so yeah make sure you protect your work with a nice clear coat of your choice signing off take it easy gang